Good morning, AP. Here we go. Um, yes. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Can someone uh, unmute themselves and say hello? See if we got this uh, system going. Can you guys hear me? Hello. Will, say hello. I saw you almost say hello. I did say hello. Say, say, <laughs> you, have to say, you have to say hello. Say hello. Did you say hello? Hello. Oh, we can't hear you. That's why. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you just waved. All right, take two. Will, can you say hello to the classroom? Hello. Awesome. Yes. Okay. We, we have you. Everyone can hear you now. All right. Um, I know I've introduced myself before. I am Mr. Wetzel. I am uh, Mr. Brophy's student teacher. Let me... Okay. We are recording. This isn't going anywhere. It's just going to my uh, site director. I'm being analyzed to see... Uh, whether or not this is a su successful lesson. Anyway, so uh, I'm Mr. Brophy, student teacher. Today, we are gonna be doing something a little different. We are going to be analyzing some art from the past and seeing what we can take from these documents. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to screen share and we're gonna get started. All right. Let me present. Are you guys seeing this? Will, I'm going to call on you. Are you are you seeing this? Yeah, I'm seeing it. All right. Thank you, Will. OK, we are doing some art analysis. So to start out in the chat, I want you guys to answer this question. Hypothetical. In order to make sure that all voters are accurately informed before an election, a test is administered to all potential voters only basic factual knowledge about the government is on the test. So stuff like who's the president, uh, how many branches of government are there, basic factual knowledge. Uh, voters must score a basic proficiency on this test in order to be vote. So do you think this is a good idea? Why or why not? I'm gonna give you guys three minutes, think about it and write your answer in the chat. And for you guys here in person, you guys can just think about it and come up with a response in your head. Do you think it's a good idea or a bad idea? This is current. This is current. This is current. What's your what's your take on this right now?
right, let's take, um, we got some good takes going on. So let's, let's, let's uh, take something from the Zoom. We'll see uh, a pro response and a con response. So who said this is a good idea? Steven Scott, is that right? Steven, do you wanna take this? What is your argument for a test before you vote? I think it could be a good idea because people can make more accurate and correct decisions when they're educated on the topic. There we go. Okay. So there's one, there's one position. They could have a more educated response. And what would the result of that be potentially? We'd have fair, better elections, maybe more informed, well, maybe not fair, but uh, elections that create a better candidate. All right, who wants to take the con? So if it sounded like you had some cons you were thinking about. Mm -hmm. Right. Right, right. Right. Right, right. So at the same time, whose vote are we suppressing? Like who, who doesn't get to vote and is the right to vote something for everyone that everyone should get, no matter if they earn it or if they just uh, have it as a right in and of itself. So let me ask you guys this follow-up question to this uh, hypothetical. Who in history, and the time we're learning about, 1820s, who would say this is a good idea and who would say this is a bad idea? Yes. Adams would say it's a good idea. And who would say it's a, wait, a good idea or a bad idea? A good idea. Okay, yeah. And then who would say it's a bad, or who would say it's a bad idea, this test? Jackson, is that what you said? Yes, good. So it's this Whig Democrat debate that's going on during this time, whether there's like the elitist Whigs who think that um, only a certain select group of people are qualified to vote because they have the intelligence and they're the um, enlightened electorate that can choose the president. And then there's the Jacksonians who believe that everyone should have the right to vote no matter what. Or, well, everyone being, every, yeah, no, everyone being white, white men over the age of 21. So we're, we are very, incrementally expanding the right to vote. Thank you for, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, definitely not soon today. So again, this is what we're, this is what we're talking about today. Democracy and this expanding democracy, even though again, it's incremental, it's only uh, these non-property owning white men that are being included in the vote. Um, we, are expanding the democracy and we're looking at the challenges to expanding democracy. So the way we're gonna do this today is, ooh, let's go back, uh, is to analyze two pieces of art. Uh, one we're gonna go through together and one we're gonna mostly give it to you and then we're gonna uh, reconvene. So this is the process that we're gonna take to uh, examining these two pieces of art. First, we're gonna look at the documentation or the sourcing of the art. What can the sourcing tell us about the piece of art? What does the title say? What does the time period say? Next, we're gonna take a visual inventory of what uh, we see in the piece. We're gonna look through the piece and without bias, try to tell what is going on in uh, the artwork. 
and we're going to say what we notice about the piece. And then finally, we're going to try to make an analysis about the piece. We're going to say, how does this piece relate to history, the time period we're learning about, the 1820s and 30s? And what is the artist's specific point of view on what's going on during that time? All right. So this is, oh gosh. All right. This is the first piece we're going to be looking at. Let me minimize this. All right, this is the first piece we're going to be looking at. It is called The County Election by George Caleb Bingham. I'm going to give you guys a minute just to start looking at it and seeing what you notice. So take a second. There's a lot going, yeah, there's a lot going on, but everything's, everything's pers uh, purposeful. This artist included all these different things happening for a reason. All right, so uh, first things first, documentation over here. We have the county election by George Caleb Bingham, and this was made in the 1850s. And it's looking at this time period we were looking at that happened before 1820s uh, and rise of popular elections. Um, and it's a county election. All right, first things first, we're gonna look at the big picture what's going on in the totality of the picture. And I heard uh, Soph say at the beginning, who is included in this painting and who is not included in this painting? Yes. Yeah, only white men are included in the painting. There are no women, there, <laughs> there aren't even young girls. There's no minorities in the painting whatsoever. It's only white men probably because these were the only men that could vote at the time. So they're the ones participating in the election. Good. All right, another big picture question. What is the overall mood of the painting? What do we, what do we sense from the mood? Busy, okay. Chaotic. Did you have something? Chaotic, yeah. What else is it a is it a happy or a sad painting, and why do you think that? Let's get someone from the chat. We can hear them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does anyone from the Zoom call want to take this one? What is the mood of the painting, and how do you know this? There's no right or wrong answer. Just how does it make you feel? Let's see. Happy, Will, Will says happy. Will, do you wanna explain why you think it's happy? It's like a bright sunny day and like they all look to be pretty happy, the people in the painting themselves. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we're gonna get to that. All right, yeah, so the overall mood, happy, we got, uh, this bright election, we got people socializing over here. Uh, it looks like people have their hats up. There's this guy with a horse <laughs> running in the background. It's lively, chaotic. I like that word. It's chaotic, disorderly. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You can just imagine all the noises happening at the same time. All right, great. 
Um, I'm going to pose uh, a counter to that. What evidence is there that there's a pessimistic side to this painting? Is there is there a darker, moody side to this painting? Yes. Yeah, OK, yeah. So we got this guy. He's being served alcohol by, uh, looks like someone that's involved with this event. Uh, we have, you said the guy in the bottom right who is uh, at a different stage of drunkenness. He's uh, he's kind of had a he's had a rough day, I guess. And yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Sure. Sure, they're vibing. Sure. Oh, this guy, this guy over here. Yeah. Who? Is it? Wait, which one? This, these guys? Oh, these guys. Okay, yeah. Sure. All right. So, um, yeah, <laughs> you guys did a good job at pointing out the various stages of drunkenness that's happening uh, during this painting. Uh, we talked about the other day, the, the role of alcohol during this time. Um, but is, so, so the darker side, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, who do you think's in charge of, of uh, administering this alcohol to the electorate? Oh, the, oh, the Who's the Nazis. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Because we're learning about Edgar Allan Poe, remember? Um, he used to give alcohol to like, um, be like the enemy. Um, and he used to give alcohol to everyone. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a big uh, draw to the event. And as you can see, it, uh, it takes its toll on some people. And uh, we can ask ourselves, are these the people that are gonna be voting in the election after they've had a couple drinks, after they've been uh, schmoozed by the party? You pointing to, the, to these guys over here? On the steps. Next to the dog. Okay, here. Oh, this guy. Okay. Hmm. Gotcha. So, what does it what does it say about the election? What What do you think Bingham's trying to say about the election when he has all these people enjoying alcohol from the party? Yes. Ah, uh, yeah. That they're not aware when they're voting. Yeah. Yeah, it really, it really is a social gathering. I mean, this is, yeah, they make a day of this because they're, I mean, a lot of these people are farmers and they're not necessarily gonna be uh, hanging out with everyone from the whole county in one day. And they, they really make an event of this. But again, as you're saying, there's this darker side to it where are they being manipulated in their votes, right? Um, cool, and, and uh, so if you mentioned these guys in the top hat, who are these guys in the top hat? The blue coats, yeah. Oh, here we go. Uh, 
Okay. But what are what are they doing? Let's see what this guy right here. What is he what is he doing in this 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 part? Yes. Sure. Yeah, he's handing out ballots or he could be handing out uh yeah, yeah, he could be trying to uh, sway voters right before they um, they they make their way up to cast their ballots. Um, so again, I mean, there's this <laughs> there's a whole bunch of drunk people, and they're trying to change their mind right before they they make their decision. So uh, interesting um, a spotlight into history, uh, especially this this period from 1820 to 1830 where there's a whole new uh, class of people that are being vo that are voting and whether or not they're making good decisions, they're having political discourse like these people or they're making bad decisions and kind of being uh, sheep, if you will. They're kind of doing whatever the party wants. Um, that's for you guys to figure out. Uh, doo -doo -doo. All right, so good job, guys. We are going to move on to the next painting. Let me clear all my air. I'm going to go like this, clear my drawings, and we are going to go to the next slide. All right, so when does this period end? 1111, right? Wait, no. Is it 1111? Oh, we have a lot of time, don't we? Now we have 20 minutes. Okay. Cool. So, oh my gosh, this is not the right slide. This is the slide. Cool. So we are looking at a second painting and this one I want you guys to mostly do on your own. Oh my gosh, if I can get this to work. Okay, cool. This one is called Politics in an Oyster House. Oh my gosh, by uh, Woodville. Let me, there we go, okay. Politics and Oyster House by Woodville. There are five questions on here. Um, for the people on Zoom, I don't need you to po uh, post your answers in the chat, but be ready to answer these questions if I call on you. Um, there's five questions here. Um, look at the painting and uh, make some analysis, analyses uh, in your head. Um, and again, Woodville, just like uh, Bingham, is very purposeful in what he's including in his paintings. He doesn't paint this guy all black for no reason. He has a, he has a reason for everything. So um, I'll give you guys five minutes and then we'll reconvene. Ooh. Mr. Brophy says we are going to pick people from home, so be ready. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so be ready. Again, you guys don't have to post the um, answers in the chat. We are just going to um, talk about them after.
They still have oyster. It's like oyster bars. Have you ever heard of oyster bars? <laughs> you guys are good. I'm interested in this. Yeah, you're sitting sitting in the back of the class. All right, there are five of us in class and there are five questions. So I'm gonna ask you guys to each nominate a person for the, for the five questions. Let's see. Let's see how we do this. I mean, they can they can also uh, volunteer if you guys are willing to volunteer. So first question, what might the open curtain symbolize? Does anyone want to volunteer before we ask you guys individually? All right, yeah. All right, let's let's make this full. All right, all right, Sarah. You have question number one. What do you think the open curtain symbolizes? I was saying that, like, because it's open, it could symbolize that they're having a very open conversation about like politics or whatever. Yeah, that's a great answer. Good job. Cold called. Successful. Yeah, they're having an open conversation about politics. Um, it's almost, it's, 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 they're bringing the public into it, right? They have a, oh my gosh, I cannot, I cannot do this. Okay, yes, they're bringing the public into it. It's an open conversation. Um, uh, so how is this, how is this different from what, uh, might have happened in the early United States, like these this late 1700s. How has this changed from then? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So now, uh, diff different, different from before, now anyone can talk about politics. Well, again, not anyone. It is the, uh, now any white man over the age of 21 can talk about politics and have this open discussion. It's brought to the public, right? All right, question number two, what do their clothes tell us? And why has Woodville dressed one man in entirely one color? So can you call on someone from the chat here? Let's expand it again. Oh, wow. You had, you had it ready. Will Draper, you are called on again. What do you think the clothes tell us? And why has Woodville dressed the one man in entirely black? Uh, I think the clothes, essentially, they tell us because they're wearing nice clothes, that these are like at least middle upper class men that we're looking at yeah and the uh this question has a lot of parts uh <laughs> just take the take the why is the one man dressed in entirely all black what do you think i'm not, i'm not positive on this one but i think he might be dressed in all black because like 
Yeah, I don't know about that part. Well, the the good news, Will, is there is no right answer, so you cannot get this wrong. What's your What's your first interpretation? Why do you Why do you think he's dressed in all black? Do you want to pass? You want to pass it on to someone else? Yeah, I I can do the other parts. I really I really not sure. okay. What do you think What do you think about the difference in age? I think the difference in age is kind of representing like the new parties coming in. Ah, okay. The Federalists and the Democratic Republicans leaving and it's almost like this new generation of politics all right so yeah there's the younger generation of politics and there's the older generation of politics there's a new way of doing things cool um does anyone else have a take on the all black does anyone want to, want to take a stab at that yes so yeah Nice. Yeah. He's like steadfast in his opinion. He's very serious and he's, he means business, right? I like that interpretation. Ah. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I like that interpretation. New money. Did you want to ask me that? There. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Why would you keep your hat on inside? Yeah. 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 And I, I like the, I like that um, old money, new money comparison you were making too. Like, again, bringing in this this different difference in age. How can we relate that to this this old and new type of pot? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's uh, let's keep going. So, what is the man on the right doing, and how does Woodville signal his passion? Who wants to call on someone? Do you want to call on someone from the chat? Oh, you can answer. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Definitely op opinionated. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we're get we're getting into the the dynamics of this person to the uh, the man on the right. So he's talking at him, not necessarily to him, um, and he's uh, making his point right. And he again, uh, we mentioned the newspaper. Sorry, I'm trying to <laughs> recap for the people on Zoom too. 
Uh, we mentioned the newspaper. He's making a political point. Um, and then this guy, uh, you said you're talking at him, not necessarily to him. What is, let's um, skip to number five. Let's, let's bring someone in Zoom on here. Um, any, any opinions on who I should call? Let's do Evelyn. Evelyn, you've been, you've been called out. Um, how does the man on the left feel about his companion's political arguments? This guy over here. Um, well, he's, I think he's a little bit put out by it. I think he's looking away from him and not as invested per se. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. He's um, apathetic to say the least. He is not really having this, this political conversation. Um, yeah, and again, <laughs> I think Sophie made the point that I've been making all day, but he's, he's like Jim from The Office. He is looking right at the camera saying, please save me from this. I am, I am done with this conversation. All right, so we have about five minutes left. This was a great analysis. Wait, before we, before we move on, what do you think the big picture point of view of the artist is? We've gotten what's happening in the scene. What do you think the big picture point of view of the artist is? Yes. What makes you what makes you say that? <laughs> okay. Mm. Yeah. All right. So Soph is saying for the people on Zoom uh, that this person's probably a Whig, uh, probably old money. He doesn't really like the way these younger people are. So he, you're saying he's putting himself in this position, right? He's this is almost. Uh, what the artist take is that oh my gosh if i do this one more time all right so yeah he's putting himself um he re repeat your point so one more time mm. yeah 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 okay so yeah so uh <laughs> so now anyone can participate in politics and they're not necessarily the cream of the crop there are these uh impassioned young people that um might not necessarily have best interest of the country Um, so we are going to move on to the final question. According to these two artists we have seen, what is the primary benefit to universal manhood suffrage and what is the biggest downside? And so my, for my friends at home, you guys can post your answer in the chat or you can unmute yourselves if you want. I know we're uh, hesitant to do that. So that's fine, but um, what is the primary benefit to universal manhood suffrage and what is the biggest downside? Do you wanna take this? Downside. Biggest downside, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And they don't think that uh, ju not just anybody should be able to participate. It should be the uh, the people that are well informed and elite, probably, right? What about the uh, what about that first painting? What do you what do you think they were saying the downside to universal manhood suffrage was? I see a half hand. You think? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and and going off of that, um, is it, I think I think one of these uh. One of these paintings, there's the question, are, is the electorate um, well-informed or are they easily manipulated? And that's, that's for, the, for the county election at least, I think that's what we have to consider is there's the um, political discourse that is happening. They're like engaging with the politics now, but then at the same time, there's the guys that are just going there to get drunk and then they're gonna vote whichever way people tell them to vote. So that's what we got. Let's um let's pull up the chat, see what people are saying. <laughs> Did you say that about the artist? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, Oh, I have voices to vote. All right, thank you, Zoom. Thanks for putting up with my uh, cold calling. Uh, we will see you tomorrow. Um, thanks for your participation, guys. I'm going to stop share.